Right, we're on the next setup, guys, now to do the second um, set of V's in this block. You can see I've set it up in the vise the same. I'm using the same area of the vise to clamp just to try and reduce any inconsistency. Same setup piece at the same place to set the angle. And I've put a 0.1 of a millimetre shim under this end. Um, the same as we did on the first side. Um, I've not checked anything yet, so that I just did that nominally just to see whether it was the same, and it probably won't be, so I might have to take that back out. But what you'll see here is because I've machined the first V in now, I've got a nice vertical face and a nice horizontal face this time to get the clock onto. So I'm going to run the clock up and down the vertical face, and that will tell me this way whether the part's sitting in the vise correctly. And then I'll do the horizontal face and that will tell me this way whether I need to put more shim in or take this shim out or leave it. So I know you can't see the clock this way but I'll spin you around when I do the vertical, uh, the horizontal face sorry, so you'll be able to see the clock on that face. So I'll just check this now, so I'm zero at one end, oh this is looking good. Yeah that's just zero all the way across and that confirms my theory that on the first side when I was clocking and I was getting some variance that it was distortion, well stress relief distortion from machining all the other stuff out so that really confirms that if you're making something like this it's always best to do your final location uh, you know the important stuff right at the very end um, what should really be doing with these and if I had a heat treatment oven and a surface grinder that would be exactly what I would be doing I'd be leaving five or six hour stock on uh, everywhere really hardening them, tempering them and then finish surface grinding them to final dimensions including the obviously the, the, the important bit but I don't have all that gear so these are going to be used in a in a soft state I'll switch the clock round, I'll move the camera and I'll show you the clocking on the horizontal face at the bottom so you can see the clock set up there onto the horizontal face at the bottom. I'll just move the camera around and see if we can see the, the dial on the camera while I'm checking that. I know you probably can't see the numbers but hopefully you can see the needle. So we'll just run this back across. So I'm zero at that end. It's gone slightly plus in the middle and back to almost zero at the other end. So even even now the block is still either stress relieving or it's to do with being clamped in the vise. I think it's more likely, likely to be stress relief. We just wind it back, let's double check it. So I'm about a thou and a half at one end. Uh, that maybe more looks like clock error. Yeah, there's about a fair run on that face. And don't forget that's over two blocks, so in half that error. So we're talking half a thou, five tenths of a thou error. I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to try and tweak that out. I think for what I'm doing, I think that's good enough. So happy with the setup. We'll just check that the uh, chuck's tight, the vice is tight, which it is. I'll strip the clock off, I'll set the cutter up. And then I'll take you through a little bit more maths and it won't be as painful as the first set that we did. But there's another triangle now to calculate. So what I'm going to do now is touch off both this vertical and horizontal face with the cutter. That's why I don't need the pin. Um, and then I'm going to move up by an amount and across by an amount to, to get my finished dimensions for putting in this V. Um, and I'll work closely to those finished dimensions off the dials. But as we're getting close to size, it's going to be a, a bit of a balance cut again like I did before of measuring across the pins and measuring over the thickness with the pin. So I need to make sure that with my setup I can access the pins with a micrometer and hopefully I'll be able to, but I'll just double check that before we, before we start in anger. Right guys, we've got the 12mm back in the 
collet chuck and ready to touch off on those two faces and very very quick bit of maths and apologies hopefully you can see this so if I hold that like that um, hopefully you can see the two V's here so this represents the two V's on the tool holder if I tip all of that up you know by 45 degrees which is effectively what I've done here in the vise you can now see I know the distance between the two points of the V I know it's a right angle triangle I know these angles and from that very simple calculation multiplying the sine of 45 by this 2.44 gives me 1.725 in inches or 43.824 in millimetres and because it's a right angle triangle with two 45 degree angles whatever that side is that side's the same so I now know my distance that I need to move in the Z axis up and in the X axis across from my two touch on points on the on the V that I've already created so I'll get touched off on that now we'll get set up and we'll start machining the second V right, I've got the I've got the block down to almost finished size on this side well I've left about 0 0.25 0 0.3 on the wall and on the floor of the slot again so what you can see now is I've got two roll pins in two tool makers clamps and you can see now especially why milling the slots through the tool slots through the other side is coming really handy because it means I can drop a tool makers clamp into the slot clamp that uh, the roll pin or the, the drill rod in place and it just helps with the measurement so this is going to be a real balancing act now because as I advance the cut in any direction so if I advance it in Z and take more off the floor of the slot that's going to make this dimension smaller at this end so the, the one that I'm measuring now across with the micrometer um, but it will actually make the other dimension across the pins uh, let me get this right <laughs> I worked this out earlier if I take material off this wall this dimension will get bigger if I take uh, material off the floor this dimension will get smaller if that makes sense so the dimension across the two pins I don't know if you can see that but the dimension across the two pins there if I take material off this wall this side wall that dimension will get bigger if I take material off the floor of the slot that dimension will get smaller so I've really got to balance my remaining stock that I've got both in Z and in X to hit the dimension that way across the pins which is really the most important one of all and also this dimension across here to make sure that that dimension is the same as it was on the other end so it's going to be quite a bit of a balancing act so at the minute this this one should finish at 1.218 and I'm measuring one point two fifty eight so that's saying there's forty thou to come off that way obviously with this end if I take the material off the floor of the slot or off the wall of the slot this dimension gets smaller so you can see how the two oppose each other when I remove stock so there's forty thou that way we'll measure the other one across the pins and see what we've got I hope I've explained that correctly. I think I did. If it doesn't make sense, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll try and re-explain it. So this way, I need to do some maths because obviously I'm measuring to the extremities of the pins, and I need to take the diameter of one pin off to get me back to my centre line. So I'm 2.691 so I'll just plug that in the calculator 2.691 and I need to take off one of the damage of the pins which is 0.2365 leaves me with 2.454 and I'm aiming for 2.440 
So I've got 14 thou this way, and I've got 40 thou this way to come off. So I'm just going to have a bit of a think about that off camera, and I'll come back and uh, we'll work out which, which way we're going to take some stuff off. Alright guys, I've not filmed all of this because I'm more likely to have sent you to sleep than the maths. Um, so I've been <laughs> incrementally coming close in on both axes, taking tiny cuts off the wall, tiny cuts off the floor, and each time everything moves. But I, I'm at a point now where I'm fairly balanced, um, and I've got five thou left to come off over the top of the pin this way, and I'm about five thou across the pins that way. Uh, so I'm five thou big that way and five thou big this way. So if I take about five thou off the floor of the slot now, that will reduce this overall thickness, not by five, but by a function of five times 45 degrees. And it, uh, similarly this way, so I might need more than five thou, but we'll start with that for a start. So we'll take comma one, comma one, two, something like that off the base of the slot now. We'll stop and we'll have a remeasure, and I'll do that one on camera for you. Uh, that's just wound the cut on. So this way I'm looking for 1.218, let's see what we've got. One point two nineteen and a half. and a half, so I'm within a thou and a half that way now, so we're getting close. Just double check that. Yeah, one point two nineteen and a half. And this way over the over both pins. So we've got two point six seventy nine. Just put that into the calculator. 2.442. So I'm two and a half thou plus that way, and I'm a thou and a half plus this way. So I'm going to just take another uh, 50, 60 microns off this floor, I think, and I think we'll be uh, we'll be about there.
and just uh, another quick clean. I've really got to watch my fingers when I'm doing this because that top edge there is like a like a corn beef tin. Take your finger off. So let's have a final measure, hopefully. We're looking for 1.218 this way. It's about a tenth over. I think I'll, uh, I'll go with that. Let's see what we've got over this way. So 2.678. Again. Yeah, 2.677 and a half. Let me put that into the uh, calculator. 2.441. So I'm, I'm within a foul that way. And I'm within a tenth that way. I think I'm going to call that a day. I, I think I'm happy with that. I think the danger of me going, trying to do any more, I'm probably likely, likely to be further away, but the wrong side of the line, and you can't put metal back on, unfortunately. So I think I, I'm going to leave that. Um, happy with that. Okay, good. So all that remains now is I've got to do the same as you saw me do on the other end and I won't film it this time I'll put the clock on the table underneath the spindle I'll pitch up by the right amount and I'll take this parallel face off and I'll bring you back when we've got that done well there we go guys I'm uh, extremely pleased with them so that's both of them up to the same standard um, and almost complete so next job now is to slice these in half on the bandsaw into single items um, and then finish the bottom face um, in the same way that I finished the top face just flank milling across to final thickness measuring the overall width and the um, the gap at the bottom there and then put them in the vise and then I've got um, a bit of work tapping um, 20 holes M8 by hand um, which will be the, the very final job that I do on them so uh, so that's next I'll get them in the bandsaw I'll get them chopped I'll not film that it's just sawing it's nothing exciting um, and then once they're sawn I'll show you one of them being machined to final final uh, finish thickness um, and then I'll tap them and then I'll come back and show you all four in a completed condition and we'll offer one of them up to the Dixon tool post at that point and um, and see how they fit. I can't fit them at the moment um, because they're in double length. There's just they just won't fit on at the moment. Uh, everything else gets in the way. So um, eyesight wise, they do look very good. I'm I'm confident they're going to fit well because I've I've made them to the exact dimensions of the one that fitted extremely well. So I'm, I'm confident the fit will be good. Um, so I'll bring you back when. Uh, when we're finishing one of them to finish thickness and then um, and then I'll bring you back at the very end uh, when we do a final review. Alright guys we're on the last operation now which is just facing the the bottom face up to finish overall thickness. Um, 
20 mil end mill I'm pushing this far harder than I should be doing really on, on this small mill um, the best sort of speed depth of cut combination I've, I've got is flat out so I'm running at 1600 revs a minute um, and quarter of a mil depth of cut it is squealing it's not happy but it's fetching the material off so I'll just show you some of that A half a mil. So that should be us on finished size there. I just went back with a a climb cut without changing the depth and that takes about 50 microns something like that, a couple of thou um, and it gets rid of the worst of the vibration so we'll just check that so we're aiming for 44 And we've got 43.97. So I'll do them all to that state, and um, and then I'll bring you back, show you a little bit of the hand tapping and the fettling, you know, the deburring, and um, and then we'll wrap up the entire series. All right, guys, we're just on the final tidy up of these now. So they're all finished to final thickness on that bottom face. I don't know if you can see that. That's um, that's the, the face it's produced, that end mill, so it's pretty decent. Um, so what I've done is I've been all over them with a you know with a decent sized fire where I can get to the decent edges, the big edges, and then in all of the small areas there and around the, the V's, I've been basically I've been using a a, a needle file um, just to go around all of those sort of areas and just get rid of all the burrs. And I've also been using an oil stone to just lightly stone the corners of the um, uh, the V's there just to put a, a tiny break edge on the corner that's in clearance anyway um, on the on the tool post so I've just done that so now we're just on with it with the hand tapping and a, a lot of people don't like hand tapping but you know they do it in a machine and it is quicker in a machine but I actually find it quite uh, quite therapeutic so hand tapping I've got an M8 tap it's a second tap but that's good enough for this um, 
I've put a, a decent sized chamfer for a leading on the top of the holes anyway. Um, I'm using uh, Sherwood standard uh, tapping compound, sawing and tapping compound um, that I've, I've you know, recently bought so that's, that's new and it works very well. So basically I'm just putting a bit of that on the cutting edges and then hand tapping safety glasses it might not be machining but if one of these lets go it normally splinters in a spectacular fashion I'm not expecting that to happen here but you never know and really it's just a case of when you first start you need to be looking front ways on to check your square and sideways on to check your square and basically don't do any correction unless the tap is turning. If you try and correct it while the tap's not turning there's a chance that the very first threads that you've started putting in you're just going to tear them. So basically all I'm doing there is eyesighting both ways that I'm square, just keep turning slowly, checking both sides so I'm into the hole there now, happy with that so basically a turn and a half and then back it off half a turn turn and a half, back it off half a turn to break the swarfle. That's it. That's the first one done. It's, it pays if you've got a little paintbrush or something, just brush the, the worst of the swarf off the bottom of the tap so that you're not dragging it back through the hole on the way out because that can mess your threads up. So I'll bring you back when I've tapped all the holes out and we're just doing the final clean up. Well, we've got to the end, guys, well the end of the cartridges at least anyway. I've still got to make the um, the, the height adjustment pieces, um, which I'll be doing in a separate, separate video. So I've blacked them up um, and I've inserted, for now, some stainless grub screws in the holes um, just so that I can use them um, in their current state. What I am going to do is make some um, proper sort of hold down screws uh, per the originals with a square on the top um, but that will again will be in a separate video so this is them for now I'll just take you take one of them and we'll go to the to the lathe and I'll show you uh, the fit onto the tool post which I'm really pleased with um, and then that will just about be it for the for the for the making of the cartridges or certainly the first batch of them anyway so we'll just move to the lathe now and I'll show you the uh, the fit on the tool post so at the tool post guys um, and I've got one of the one of the cartridges there and if I put that in place And do the same test as I did with the the ones that I got when I you know with the lathe right at the beginning of this sort of series. There is absolutely no play in there whatsoever. So I'm really pleased with how you know I know it's been a bit of work going from um, all of the maths work that I did up front to to get to this point. But I'm pleased I did that sort of reverse engineering. To find the best fit and the best size for the for the actual tool post, and I realise I haven't got the quick release on there yet, the, the the height setting, but you know they clamp up, they clamp up really nicely. There's, there's you know when you, when you clamp them back, you can't feel any twisting or any kind of movement. You know, that's a real solid clamp, which is what I was after. Obviously, the more solid this fits to the tool post the more solid your entire turning setup is going to be which will reduce vibration and chatter and all the things that, that, that you know are associated with, with, with a poor setup where you've got loose 
or badly fitting items. So really happy with those and um, they've come out really well. So um, I think we'll sort of wrap this sort of series of videos up now making these. Um, obviously there will be some future videos showing the making of the, um, the height adjustment pieces and possibly the, 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 the screws that I'm going to make as well but as they stand at the moment I'm really really pleased with those. Um, the whole idea of this video and there's been I've had some really good comments from one or two people saying you know rather than all the effort with the with the mill pitching to the holes and <laughs> taking the backlash into account and forgetting to take the backlash into account on certain occasions um, would it have been quicker to to you know blue the face up and scribe them and mark them out and and drill them that way absolutely of course it would you know that that's that would be by far the quickest and it would function just the same um, but to get this kind of fit and to get the, the the accuracy that I was trying to achieve of fit that dowel hole was all important that was that was the way that I sort of planned it out to get the, the, the first V in the right position um, so I had to touch on both sides anyway to get that dowel hole put in um, and the whole the whole essence of this series of videos really was about trying to show that you know you don't need DROs you don't need loads of special tooling there with a basic mill without any of that stuff on you can still achieve good results if you're prepared to put the, the you know the time and the effort in so and and you know for me this was about me testing out the mill itself to see how it performed in terms of accuracy and I'm yeah, I'm fairly pleased for a hobby, for a, for a cheap sort of import hobby mill, it's performed really, really well. Um, it's protested a bit here and there, and I think that's, as I've said before, spindle bearings and sort of uh, gearbox bearings that probably need some uh, attention. Um, but on the whole, you know, I've hit all of my sizes within plus or minus a thou at, at worst, um, which for a hobby mill in a home shop is perfectly acceptable I think you know it's um, I'm really pleased with that and it's proven to me that the mill itself and the tooling that I've got today I'm capable of making decent quality items that fit well um, uh, you know and, and do the job so I hope you found that useful I hope some people have found it interesting I hope it's been hopefully inspiring to somebody else to go and make something similar um, and the whole first principles maths thing and the reverse engineering thing that I did in the very first episode of the series I think was all important because that shows that you know you can take like I've done there you can take the best of what you've got and make things to fit and be a really really good fit based on just doing a bit of upfront work and upfront planning and yes a bit of maths which you know it's not it's not the most riveting of subjects but it, it's a way of showing by first principles how you can get to a finished article that for me I think that's as good as an original block other than it's in a soft state uh, I, I would dearly have loved to have a surface grinder and a heat treatment oven to have been able to finish surface grind these and make them absolutely you know um, as good as the originals but uh, maybe that's for a future a future video in, in, in years to come when I've uh, expanded the shop. So, as I said, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've certainly enjoyed making them. I've enjoyed making the videos. It's been a real learning curve um, for me getting back to doing some proper precision work um, on manual machines. Um, and, and, you know, I've really enjoyed, I've really enjoyed making these. So, um, we'll leave it at there for, for now. And... Um, so thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for the support you guys give me and the comments. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please share. Uh, you know, if you're watching this and you've not already subscribed, please subscribe because it will help the channel grow um, and and share with like-minded people. Um, and um, we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next video. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but um, we'll be back in a, in a short while with something else um, to make.